Good evening, my Facebook friends and my supporters, my parishioners, and everybody. I thank God for you. It is with great privilege and great honor that I come to you, thanking God for each and every one of you. Thanking God for the word that he's given me. For the singles, hallelujah. Now, I come to you with a word for singles because I, of course, have been single, and I know what it is to try to live a life under the auspices of the Holy Spirit and not have your helpmate. I do understand because I've been there, and it is very, very difficult. And um, that being said, this word is for you. We go through life. Some of us go through life with our eyes closed. And some of us go through life with our eyes open. And some of us go through life and we get the lessons. We see the lessons. We go through the lessons, but we don't retain them. And many times when we don't learn the lessons, all the times when we don't learn the lessons, we are destined to repeat those same mistakes that we made. So these things are, uh, they may be revelations to some, but they're going to be reminders for others. But these things are foundational cornerstones to your life, to your destiny, to your fulfilling God's destiny in your life and sidestepping many mistakes and errors and lost time. I love you. All right, without any further ado, let me read to you. Well, first of all, I'm going to uh, give this message for singles a title. And if I must choose a title for this message, it will be Choose Wisely. It will be Choose Wisely. Amen. Father God, in the blessed holy name of Jesus, and before your awesome presence that we come, blessing you, Lord, in all three persons of your Godhead, in the, Father, the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, blessing you for your omnipresence, your omniscience, hallelujah, and your omnipotence, and everything that you are, oh God, you are inconceivable, Father God. Thank you, Father God, for the facet of yourself, for the minuscule, microscopic amount of understanding that we can perceive of you. Oh God, we ask for you to touch, heal, deliver, save, and set free. Loose your blessings on us tonight as you let us down into a wisdom of well, a wisdom, and a well of wisdom and knowledge and understanding. In your will and in your way and in your word, oh God. We ask for you to make your word flesh, hallelujah, and to make your word nourishing. Let it be meat to our navel and health to our bones, oh God, spiritually, so that we may grow and so that we may defeat our enemy and stomp him under our feet, as you said in your blessed and holy word in Luke 10 and 19, behold, I give you power to tread over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, I'm going to start by just making a few choice statements. Remember, the topic is choose wisely. Now, just because a person is smart, good looking, and funny 
doesn't mean that they're going to be there for you when the chips are down. How many of us know that sometimes looks can be a handicap? You never thought about that, did you? Well, you might have. Looks can be a handicap. And do you know why? Because sometimes being so overly uh, an individual that you choose that might be gorgeously good looking may have you used or developed themselves or become dependent so much on their looks that they def they failed to develop their character. And one of the worst experiences you could have in your life is someone who looks like an angel, but inward they are a raven and wolf. Someone who has the face of Adonis or of Venus, but has the heart of Mephistopheles or Satan or, or a demon because they were able to skip grades because of their appearance. And you know the word of God says, hallelujah, quickly in the book of Samuel, he told Jesse for Man looketh on the outward appearance, but God looketh on the heart. Hallelujah. So, many times, many of us have been deceived by good looks. We've got to start using our knowledge, intuition, and common sense. How often do we allow good looks to shut down our judgment? How often do we allow superficial things to shut down our judgment and being 55 years old and having the experience of uh, being a divorcee and before that dating and having many failed relationships I can attest to the fact that I have used looks to discern when I didn't use my common sense and I definitely wasn't using the Holy Ghost amen <laughs> so you know it is what it is and it happens like it happens when we do that just because a person is smart good looking and funny doesn't mean they're going to be there for you when the chips are down character just because a person is smart, good looking, and funny doesn't mean that they're going to be there for you when the chips are down and when you need them most. And that's the main reason why you can't jump into a relationship. This is your life. This is your life. Oh my God, if I had the time back that I've wasted and lost in failed relationships if I had that time back you know you don't have to get into your 30s and 40s or, or, or 50s to sidestep making these mistakes that I made and that other older saints made you can dodge those bullets by implementing these principles right now in your life this is a this is wisdom's warning. Time. Take your time and make good choices. Now, listen to this. Many relationships come to an inevitable end because they were built on the sinking sand of lies. You know, a lie is a horrible foundation to build your relationship on. And so that's why it takes a, a major thing. It's not a little thing, but one major thing can straighten all of this out. Okay? And I'll get to that in a minute. One major thing can straighten all of this out. 
Okay, many relationships come to an inevitable end because they were built on the sinking sand of lies. Okay, now listen to this one. Yes, you look good to me too, but not good enough for me to lie about my life and who I really am. No, I'm, I'm not going to lie. It's dumb to lie to somebody or to catfish somebody and lie to them about who you are or to put on a front about who you are because when you lie to somebody about something that's inevitably going to be proven or, proven, or when you put on a front and fake to be somebody that you're not and the covers are inevitably going to be put, pulled over on you, you are showing your ignorance and your lack of understanding that the light is going to shine in the darkness and everything that's hidden is going to be made manifest. So lying and putting on a front and not being who you really are shows your own ignorance. And I may go to as far as to say stupidity. It's stupid. It's stupid. Be who you are. Be who you are. Now listen to this. The crowning glory of love is trust. You might want to write that down. The crowning glory of love is trust. There are a lot of, of different facets of love that we could go into tonight. You know, the 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter is the love chapter. And you could go all through that and pull out different things. Uh, charity or love active, not unseemly, vaunted not itself up, is not puffed up, seeketh not her own. But the crowning glory of love is trust. Trust. You can have love without trust, but you can't have intimate love without trust. Intimacy means what it says. And if I have to quote T.D. Jakes, I will. Intimacy can be thought of as into me see. So if I lie to you, that means I didn't trust you with the truth. I didn't open up myself and let you see on the inside of me. How can I love you? When I, the real me, this is not, this is not, this is not the real me. The real me lies within. And if I, if I tell you a lie, I have closed up my reality and I put on a false reality for you, a disguise. I didn't trust you with the truth. So the crowning glory of love is trust. Be wary of someone who erects or builds a lot of lies because when a person builds a lot of lies, lies they have constructed a, a alternate reality, a false reality. A person who builds a lot of lies has constructed a, 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 a house for you to live in. And they have to create supplemental lies to support that lie. They have to create excess lies, more and more lies to support that one foundational lie that they told. Let's move on. When you get ready to enter a relationship with someone, tell the truth. Let them decide whether they want to proceed with this relationship with you or not. Don't rob them of the opportunity to make a decision by telling a lie. Don't rob them. Let them decide. Don't deceive them and take the truth away from them because you think they look so good or you want them so bad. It's not worth telling a lie. 
because that that first a first impression can never be made again. You can't make you can't meet somebody all over again. Once you meet them, you've met them. You can't make that first impression again. Don't start uh, your your date out or your your first meeting out or your first conversation out on deceit on a lie. Don't do it. Don't do it. If you can't tell the truth, just don't say nothing. Just don't say anything about that. Just 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 shut that and close that area of conversation off until you're ready to talk about it or just say I'm I, I'm not ready to discuss that yet. Don't lie. Don't lie. Okay? All right. Moving on. Many relationships end because they are built on superficial things like sex, appearance, and money when they should be built on trust. Yeah, yeah. Many relationships, I'm going to say it again, that's what I'm saying again. Many relationships end because they were built on superficial things like sex, appearance, and money when they should have been built on trust. Here it is again. Those lies will inevitably come crashing down. A lie can't support nothing. A lie can't support nothing. There are a lot of lies. A lot of lies that are going on in this country. There are a lot of lies that are going on in this world. And those lies are going to come tumbling down. They're going to come tumbling down. They got to. The walls have to come tumbling down like London bridges falling down. <laughs> a lie can't stand. A lie can't support nothing because it's a lie. Like Bishop Baker used to say, it lie over here or it lie over there. Because it's a lie. You can't build nothing on a lie. Hallelujah. Oh my gosh, this right here is another one. Sex, intelligence, and good looks will never be indicators indicators of whether a person is qualified to take you into your destiny. Sex, intelligence, and good looks will never be indicators of whether a person is qualified to take you into your destiny. There is nothing, there's nothing that can prove a person is qualified to take you into your destiny more than integrity. Integrity. Integrity means a lot more than looks, a lot more than sex, a lot more than intelligence. You can go further my mother went further with a man who had a third grade education than she did with someone who had a high school diploma because integrity beats out book knowledge and school knowledge every time. Integrity. Integrity. My granddaddy, my granddaddy had probably a second or first grade education. But when he died, he owned two homes and property because he had integrity. Integrity will take you a long way. Integrity will open up doors and take you places that your knowledge, your book smarts, and your intelligence, intelligence cannot take you. Now, so to bring that right there to a close, make notes of those things because those things are very important, single people. Now, Let's go back to, let me open up that revelation that I said that I was going to open up about the one thing, the one thing that you need. This is more important than anything. The one thing that you need 
to maximize before you give somebody your all and give somebody your heart and give somebody your life and give somebody your love. The one thing that's going to make everything come into perspective. One thing. It's a four-letter word. Do you know what it is? Time. Time. Listen to this. Watch this. When we hurry up and grab somebody and don't take our time, we end up with somebody that's not worth our time and we end up having regrets because of wasted time. I'm going to say that again. When we hurry up and grab somebody and don't take our time, we end up with somebody that's not worth our time and we have regrets because of wasted time. You can never get back wasted time. You can get money back, but you can't never get time back. Let me show you the significance of time and what time, taking your time in a relationship will do for you. Let's show, let me show you. Go with me in your Bibles to Matthew, the third chapter and the 12th verse. Quickly, quickly, Matthew 3 and 12. And if you have it, it reads thusly, and it says, well, in order to give it a more complete thought, I'm going to go to the 11th verse. Jesus is speaking, uh, John is speaking here, uh, actually, and he says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. Now, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Now, the 13th verse, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Now, Jesus was talking to simple farming people, peasants, okay? So most of the things that Jesus used as analogies were built upon farming, were built on things that they could relate to. Farming was something they, they, that they could relate to, okay? Now, breaking down that scripture, he shall burn up the chaff. Now, in this context, now, chaff in the literal context or in its literal uh, um, definition, chaff is like you. If you have a st um, a stalk of wheat, the wheat is on the inside of of the stalk. The wheat, the literal wheat, has to be beaten out of the stalk, and what remains is the stalk, and the, and it's referred to as the chaff. You get rid of the stalk. And you you beat out the wheat. You beat out the you beat the wheat out of the stalk, and then you mill that wheat down, and then it becomes meal, right? Okay. So in this context, okay, he shall burn up the chaff. So that that I just explained is the literal meaning of chaff, but in this context. Chaff can be referred to or thought of as hidden things, mysteries, the unknown, misconceptions, or lies. Okay? Chaff can be referred to or thought of as misconceptions, lies, the unknown, or, or mysteries, or hidden things. Okay? Now, with that in mind, let's read that scripture with that, let's read the 13th verse. Okay? And it says, reading the 13th verse again, 
or the 12th verse, I'm sorry, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Now, I just explained to you what the chaff was, and we know the chaff can be used in a metaphorical sense as hidden things, mysteries, the unknown, misconceptions, and lies. Well, how is that going to be burned up? Okay, with unquenchable fire. What is unquenchable fire? Time. Time. Time is going to make everything manifest. And the word manifest means to be made plainly seen. Okay, if that's not enough to prove the significance of, of time, time is a fire. Time is a fire that God will use to prove himself and to prove everything and to make everything that is in the darkness come to light. Time. You live and living long enough to know that time will find you out. Time will pull the covers off of a whole lot of things. And it's going to take time for you to determine if the person that is courting you or the person that you are courting is for you. It's going to take time to find out whether they're telling the truth about who they are or if they're telling a lie. It's going to take time. Not their intellect, not their good looks. And you're not supposed to be having sex. But those things are not going to determine whether that person is is qualified to carry you in your into your destiny. None of that. The only thing that's going to reveal if they have integrity is time. The only thing that's going to be revealed, uh, the only thing that's going to reveal whether they are going to be there for you when the chips are down, time. Issues, situations are the only thing that's going to reveal to you who they really are. The fire of time, situations, and circumstances. The fire of complications and ramifications is the only thing that's going to pull the cover off of them. You better not rush into that relationship and then get sad when you get used and abused and thrown away and used and thrown away like a dirty cloth. You better not because if you don't take the time to find out who they are, the fault is yours. The fault is yours. When you take those marriage vows, you're taking those vows re retroactively and accepting the casualty or the indemnity. You, you, the vows are a waiver, basically. The vows are a waiver. The the marriage vows are basically Proverbs 15 and 6. What is, what is that? Swear into your own hurt and change it not because you were supposed to know who you were marrying. You were supposed to know. I've made the mistake. I'm a divorcee. And whether it was her fault or whether she was wrong or I was wrong, whether I was, whether she was right or I was right, it doesn't matter who was right or wrong. All that matters is those vows were violated. All that matters is somebody gave up. All that matters is we lied. We swore, right? But we didn't keep the promise, right? We lied. And you can be forgiven for lying. But you don't have to lie if you will take the time. Because time will burn up all that fake stuff. Time will burn up all that superficial stuff. Okay? All right. One more scripture and then I'll close. One more scripture and I'll close. Choose wisely. Choose wisely is the name of, of the topic or the subject of this quick sermon for the singles. Choose wisely. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 3 and 13. 1 Corinthians 3 and 13. To show you the significance of time 
and to show you that the fire that Jesus and the apostles was making a, a reference to is time. Watch this. 1 Corinthians 3 and 13. Every man's work shall be made manifest. The word made manifest means plainly seen. Okay? For the day shall declare it. Look at that. Listen to that. The day. The, a day is an increment of time. A day is a measurement of time. There are 365 days in a year. A year is a measurement of time. A day is a measurement of time. An hour is a measurement of time. A minute and a second are all increments of time, aren't they? So they put an increment of time in the scripture. Okay? Apostle Paul to the Corinthians. Every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it. Time shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire. Redundancy because the fire of the day. The fire is the day. It shall be revealed in time. In time. This is a secular song, but I'm going to use it as an analogy. You remember those that are my age, you're going to remember it. You that are looking at this, that take the time to look at this, and I hope that you have the patience to stick with me and to 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 go with me through this this word. But if you're under 40 years old, you won't remember this, but you're going to have to be in your 40s mid or mid 40s to remember this. The barge, they sung this song It'll all be revealed in time. I know just how you feel. Cause this time loves for real. In time it will reveal the special love that's deep inside of us. We'll all reveal in time. It'll all be revealed in time. Time, okay? Time is going to tell the story. Choose wisely. Don't rush into this thing. We, you've made enough mistakes already. You don't need to make a mistake when it comes to your mate. You don't need to make a mistake when it comes to your mate. Be very sure. Choose wisely. I love you. Have a good night.